good afternoon uh, first of all i would uh, like to thank dr chandrashekar for uh, asking me to present as well as uh, i being the first uh, fellow i wholeheartedly uh, congratulate sir for completing his 10 years as well as uh, for making me uh, practice rheumatology I, uh, after doing my fellowship i am doing uh, uh, pure rheumatology practice itself so uh, the whole credit goes to dr chandrashekar and dr dharmanand for the same uh, without wasting much time i would be uh, i would like to present uh, the case 17 year old male was referred to me with a referral letter stating a patient has oligoarthritis with loose stools and low back pain with fever do the needful and I, when i took the history patient had pain in both the knee joints both the ankles right shoulder uh, when i examined with minimal swelling uh, previously he had pain in almost all the joints which was about 2 months back which started with a history of fever followed by uh, pain in all the joints the joint pain had subsided and when he saw me he had only pain in the joints which are mentioned currently of the lower limb the medicines and still persisted he also had low back pain which was severe sometimes back and more in the morning associated with stiffness for about 10 minutes it improved with activity but used to increase if he works more uh, after 15 minutes or 20 minutes there there was no other significant uh, uh, he also had a history of loose stools and constipation alternately sometimes he had loose stools uh, uh, alternated by constipation which was again since 2 months associated with abdominal pain he had about 5 to 6 episodes of uh, loose stools uh, per day whenever he had loose stools and it was not associated with blood in the stools the other thing significant thing was he had a history of significant weight loss and loss of appetite over a period of 2 months when i examined the patient patient was emaciated he had tachycardia uh, he had difficulty in uh, difficulty in getting up from a uh, sitting position when i asked him he was taken by two of the people holding his hands and when i examined he had very minimal tenderness in both the knees and minimal swelling and when i asked him to get up he had difficulty in getting up from sitting position i asked him to bend uh, to test for shober so shober's test was positive and i checked his si joint tenderness si joints were tender and on examination he had hepatosplenomegaly and there was no lymphadenopathy summarizing the findings 17 year old male with fever continuous fever low back pain oligoarthritis bar arthralgia with significant loss of weight and appetite with altered bowel habit and shoberts test being positive with hepatosplenomegaly i think uh, the delegates can uh, give their diagnosis now at this point so that you can plan the investigation enteropathic arthritis other possibilities reactive arthritis but you will not okay. be able to explain heptosplenomegaly isn't it yeah, yeah. still still is still intestinal okay. tuberculosis with arthritis right. i also was going to say this and then of course hiv <laughs> okay hiv okay yeah 17 year but uh, yes of course you have to keep that things open that you come last time so the possible uh, diagnosis uh, according to whatever was suggested was basically the first and foremost was 
reactive arthritis, some sort of seronegative uh, spondyl arthritis that was in view of a patient having low back pain, oligoarthritis and uh, oligoarthritis uh, actually uh, history uh, uh, when patient uh, came with a referral letter with saying that he was a MD uh, person who had referred oligoarthritis with low back pain and altered bowel habits. The first thing which came to my mind before seeing the patient was inflammatory bowel disease was the thing or some sort of seronegative spondyloarthritis. But when I examined possibility that patient had arthritis previously but it was more of arthralgia and there was significant weight loss and loss of appetite. Uh, loss of appetite and also uh, he had difficulty in getting up from sitting position that was also a very significant thing which I saw in the patient. So, uh, my diagnosis at that point of time when I saw the patient was first was inflammatory bowel disease or some sort of seronegative arthritis or probably he has some sort of muscle problem probably there could be some uh, myositis was uh, what I thought at that point of time. So, I will just, I'll just show the investigations which were done for this patient. These are the investigations which were done. Patients, hemoglobin was 11.2, total leukocyte count was 4300 with predominant lymphocytosis 65 percent and patient's platelet count was 72,000, ESR high, creatinine was 2 and CRP was 11 and we got a CPK done which was in thousands, 2,445 and uh, ANA was also done by ELISA uh, which was negative. So, I, <clears throat> I think now what would you be the revised diagnosis? Possibility so there was, one is there was no, skin, there was, uh, no other skin manifestations. So, uh, scleroderma cannot be considered actually because there is no skin changes per se. Myositis. One possibility is myositis since CPK is high. Anything else? Why platelets are so low? SLE? Yes. Other option is SLE because you cannot explain the low platelet if it in a myositis, isolated myositis. And creatinine also being high probably the possibility of some autoimmune connective tissue disorder is uh, Because there is likely. a renal involvement, hematological involvement, muscle involvement, questionable polyarthralgia. There is no much of counts, very much increase in the counts, platelet has come down, creatinine has gone up, CPK is high, probably some sort of autoimmune disorder, maybe connective tissue disorder was, 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 was in my mind at this point of time. Uh, along with it, there were some other investigations also. We did a LFT done because most of the patients who have uh, CPK high uh, generally uh, have raised SGOT and SGPT, but uh, <coughs> this patient had uh, normal SGOT and SGPT and normal alkaline phosphatase. Total protein was 8.2, glo albumin globulin ratio was maintained. Uh, nothing much from uh, LFT as such. Uh, an ultrasound was done, uh, the report is not there. Ultrasound was done, ultrasound showed a right ileocecal uh, uh, thickening of the bowel loops on the right side of the colon, uh, 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 predominantly involving cecum, uh, predominantly involving the ileocecal junction. So, at this point of time, uh, I would like to invite various diagnoses at this point of time with uh, the history investigations as well as a right sided uh, colitis uh, like picture, ileocecal colitis uh, like picture, what would be in the mind? Okay. Crohn's okay. and tuberculosis are the two possibilities. Okay. But Crohn's generally uh, does not have low uh, platelet count as well as uh, uh, CPK changes. Will CPK not changes. Sometimes if it is an overlap probably it could be possible, probably we need to explain with two diagnoses rather than a single diagnosis. But if you think a possibility of tuberculosis, is it possible to have tuberculosis with uh, such features? 
Thrombocyte opinion, unless the marrow is involved, you don't bone marrow. See. Unless bone marrow is involved, uh, usually tuberculosis or any sort of tuberculosis generally has uh, uh, increased platelet count, which is again a feature of inflammation. So probably uh, tuberculosis uh, with thrombocytopenia in the sense if you need to suspect probably you should have a marrow involvement. So the next thing what I thought was again the same what you had thought like tuberculosis. But there was uh, one thing which was uh, very significant like patient had a significant tenderness in the back. So uh, that was not explainable by tuberculosis, it was symmetrical, it was on both the sides. So that was not explainable by, uh, if you consider tuberculosis uh, with such a uh, report, I, I actually did not uh, uh, see his reports, uh, previous reports, but uh, after seeing this I went back to his reports and saw that. He was already put on anti-tubercular drug for more than a month. He was put on methotrexate. He was put on steroids. He was put on many other medications in the past one month. He had received a, uh, ATT for one month for the same reason. Sir, this anti-tubercular drugs are known to cause a little arthralgia lasting a few days. Yes, that, no, that's there. No, but uh, if I am not wrong, as per the history, he had arthritis from much earlier, actually. Is this a paraneoplastic? The other possibility is a paraneoplastic. Pro probably at this, point of at this point of time, there were some things which were not explained, especially the tenderness in the SI joint, uh, as well as thrombocytopenia, which was disproportionate. And after receiving a course of anybody who has tuberculosis and who has taken uh, ATT for a period of a month, we should expect some benefit at least. He was on ATT, but still uh, there was no uh, significant improvement, especially in his fever. So probably the chance of t still tuberculosis is the first thing which needs to be considered, which has to be investigated. But before going into any of the invasive investigations, what I thought was we will get his MRI of a spine because there is a loose tools. Uh, there, there are a lot of things started everything with fever. Could it just be chikungunya followed by all these things? There are lot, lots of things which came into mind. So I thought we'll just it could just be a seronegative arthritis and thrombocytopenia could be just drug induced. That's all. So I thought we'll get one MRI done so that we will rule out uh, sacroiliitis. If there is sacroiliitis, then probably treating it as IBD, I will be justified. If there is no sacroiliitis, then probably I will go ahead and do uh, either a colonoscopy or some scopy. Uh, and get a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis was uh, what I thought. And then the next thing I got a MRI done and to my surprise MRI was absolutely normal. I asked radiologist to see it once again because he had classical back pain, SI joint tenderness as well as he had uh, uh, Schober's was positive. There was limitation in his back uh, movement. So I asked him to get uh, see it once again. Then he saw it with this in mind, uh, seeing for sacroiliitis. And one thing he uh, he told me that even though I am not seeing any changes, I am seeing there is some sort of increased marrow what I am seeing. So uh, th that is what I can tell you. Uh, otherwise, uh, MRI is absolutely normal. So any any hints at this point of time? MRI. Uh, no, the, was reported. Uh, the the <coughs> MRI edema is in the marrow or No, in there the is no edema, there is only increased marrow in altered, the joint. Altered increased. marrow signals, uh, they call uh, it as altered uh, marrow uh, signals, something like that. Okay. No, actually, probably that it may uh, bone marrow, uh, marrow proliferative diseases, the myeloproliferative group of diseases. That so, be for putting all this in mind, a young patient presenting with uh, all these things with a marrow infilt, marrow uh, ha having uh, shown increased marrow in MRI. So probably doing a colonoscopy uh, uh, probably would yield a diagnosis, but the thing was patient was very sick and probably doing a colonoscopy would have harmed him much. So I thought we'll, since a ra radiologist was a very reliable person and he said uh, there is some problem in the marrow. So uh, he was very strongly suggesting that then we got got a bone marrow done and this is what is a impression. It turned out to be ALL. Yeah. <laughs> so
Uh, so, uh, no, I have a little more uh, concern actually. The, uh, didn't, didn't the pathologist uh, see the peripheral smear and... Uh, no, at hint first it, you, it will be in the lab itself where pathologists do not see the slides, sir. So, uh, no, actually speaking, the, yes, the, the, see, no, the, there, are, there are a few concerns, I mean, the basically, I mean, just for the discussion sake, see, this is how we normally miss the uh, bus. See, here, there are a few points, I mean, it's an it's a interesting case from the perspective of how we sometimes uh, get missed in the clinical dis uh, things. He, uh, while presenting, there was a leukopenia, I mean, there is, sorry, thrombocytopenia, there was a normal uh, leukocyte count, but the predominant lymphocytosis. And uh, he is aged 17 years. See, the, in a person who is aged 17 years, normally by the age around 16, 13 to 14, we expect the transfer of the differential count from the pediatric profile to the adult profile. Because the pediatric profile is the one where it's a lymphocyte dominant and is neutrophil low. And that slowly transgressed to the neutrophil dominant lymphocyte low. This is a transgression which was expected. At an age of 17 years, you normally do not expect a lymphocyte dominance. Uh, over the things. So probably best clue could have been peripheral smear would have uh, given us a little more uh, hint at that point of time. Probably they would have looked into some of the atypical lymphocytes, little ugly looking lymphocytes. Uh, uh, there were other reports from... Uh, probably it could be secondary infection probably or something else. Uh, like patient it was diagnosed just... At no, probably he, he has a secondary infection or it's an infiltration due to malignancy, uh, lympho, lymphoma per se itself. It is very difficult to explain. We have not worked up further because with the diagnosis of ALL, he is directly referred to uh, an oncologist. See, the, these kind of increased infection, altered bowel thickening, see the altered bowel thickening in the ultrasound is a very vague finding. It's, you can't be so sure on that uh, to give the validation of that particular finding because Minimal edema sometimes given altered eco, altered scans. No, arthralgias can be explained. They, they are a known manifestation of le le leukemias and lymphoma. The classic. Important marker was he had only arthralgia and on clinical examination there was not much evidence of arthritis. There was bone marrow tenderness. All this and with the fever, especially in an adolescent going into an adult, the first diagnosis should have been a myeloproliferative order, hematological. Bone pain more than arthritis is a strong indication with a peripheral picture like this. Of course, arthritis does occur in myeloproliferative disorders, but that, that was a very significant uh, clinical finding. It should not lead us only into the rheumatological pathway. Pro probably they might have picked and most of the times uh, probably ALL. Uh, if it is not spilling into the uh, smear, probably may not show anything. So probably uh, bone marrow would have been diagnostic and if peripheral smear was done, probably it might have picked. Uh, some peripheral smears were reported from outside, which were uh, reported as normal, probably one or two weeks prior. Uh, but, uh, but the thing is bone marrow uh, was uh, diagnostic, which no, the, there, is the a, there is an entity what we call as packed marrow syndrome, so in that actually the uh, abnormal malignant lymphocytes don't spill into the periphery. But the, the, the only uh, crucially is that actually in the PS you may not see the lymphoblast, but you see something what is called as atypical lymphocytes. So they are usually they call it as atypical lymphocytes, which has a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio with a high chromatin ratios. Uh, usually off late the recent uh, automated uh, cell counters, they flag it. So they say, they flag it to say that ask the peripheral smear to be checked. They, they have really improved sophistication on that area. Yes, sometimes they give it as a query blast. The, because to say in the periphery a blast, there should be a good number. Otherwise, we are likely to miss. No, no, patient was directly referred to so, an oncologist. No, once, you, we, even, once bone marrow speaks the fact, then I don't think we need to no, and we, waste time actually. And I even didn't waste time to see why he is having a, a right ileocecal thickening or whatever, why his altered bowel habits were altered. Uh, we didn't go into that, he was directly referred to an oncologist. Basically, we wanted to have a diagnosis. Now, there, are, there are very few critical uh, lessons from this particular case. The critical lesson here is, see, usually a child with an arthritis, when they are too sick to explain, it is said that the leukemia should be excluded. 
and it is, I mean, it's other point that, uh, of course, we also as a discussant, we missed that particular point in the very beginning. The most crucial, he said, the child was looking very sick, lost a lot of weight. You know, that, that, that's, that's something which should put us into rethink that, that the, we, we really missed an ALL. See, the, a sick looking child should always be thought of ALL as a possibility. No, but uh, he gave a red herring of uh, asymmetrical lower limb arthritis. Yes, that was no, because, that was because, because, because the, refer the referral letter, the referral letter was, uh, what the referral letter, uh, the diagnosis what I came after seeing a referral letter and after examination was there was no much difference when I saw both the things. It was uh, like when I saw, I thought of probably it is inflammatory bowel disease and when I examined, there, was, there were only one finding which made me that there is something more, probably he had difficulty in getting up, that made me that probably he has some muscle involvement and CPK came high, I thought it is myositis. So uh, again, uh, so the thing is basically that misled with creatinine being high, probably it is some sort of autoimmune disorder. Probably some. And what are the lymph nodes? Never no, there, there were no lymph nodes. Uh, there were no lymph nodes in any of the in ultrasound. Also, there were there were no lymph nodes. So the uh, message what I want to uh, tell is basically when a child, child or young adolescent comes with uh, disproportionate pain in literature, there is or in textbooks, uh, there is only two things which is mentioned when a person has a bony pain or disproportionate pain with without much swelling think of either uh, uh, rheumatic fever or probably uh, uh, leukemias infiltrative diseases these are two things which are mentioned so probably this gave me uh, again reinforced me that when a young child comes probably this is not a first incidence when i was in chandra also we had seen three or four patients with similar presentation so again it reaffirms that probably we need to not only think in terms of rheumatology, but we need to think of other things also because when a referral letter comes with joint pain, low back pain, loose tools, there is no other diagnosis other than inflammatory bowel disease or some sort of seronegative arthritis. So when we work, probably we should work unbiased. That is a message what I want to tell. Thank you.